Welcome, everyone. This is November 16, 2023. This is Jenkins Advocacy and Outreach. Topics today include the Contributor Spotlight Project, Google Summer of Code, guidance on tweets and LinkedIn, and DevOps Dozen award nomination. And then next week is a major holiday in the United States. So discussion there. Any other topics that need to go on the agenda? Okay, good. So let's let's talk about the contributor spotlight. Chris, thanks for joining us. And Kevin, so tell us what there is. Maybe Kevin, you want to be the voice first or Chris, what do you prefer? Kevin. Okay, Kevin, that you've works. been nominated. Sure. So uh, things are going really well. We're moving right, right along with the contributor project. Uh, Chris has submitted the ticket to the Infra Help Desk. So Hervé has been helping us get that integrated and set up in the system. Uh, Chris is also... I've been I've been working with Chris to get uh, the smaller points finalized and just a couple little things that uh, hadn't considered before. But um, everything is going really well. We've got the first uh, contributor story to be published has been merged. So um, really, it's just a matter of making sure that the contributor site is live, and then at that point, we'll have everything going out. Uh, I met with Alyssa yesterday to discuss the uh, publication schedule. Uh, right now, I think uh, what we're going to go with is one every two weeks or every other week or so, um, just to make sure that there is space, uh, time to highlight the contributor. Uh, and that also gives us um, time to discuss other things and highlight other topics in between the two so nothing's overloaded. Uh, and that gives us a little bit of leeway with publication schedule in the sense of uh, right now we've got 10 or so responses altogether. Uh, with that schedule, we'll have content for a few months and that will give us time to get more responses. So we'll have even more after the fact. So going really well, uh, everything's moving along. Chris has been an amazing help with just getting this uh, put together and kind of and getting us to this point. Um, so all the thanks in the world to Chris, by all means. Um, and yeah, really excited, really looking forward to getting this published and really uh, excited to have the, the spotlights on the contributors. Great. So is there a prototype that we should look at together or is that still being evolved? There is a prototype site that uh, Chris has put together and the uh, Infra Contributor Spotlight um, repo actually has uh, the, uh, the, the instructions, but uh, I can do, I think I can do it really fast because I'm already in there if I'm not mistaken. Um, so I can share my screen. Uh, let oh, me just pull great. it up real quick. Yeah, sure. so let me stop yeah. sharing. Go ahead, Kevin. Okay, let me just make sure I have the right site. There we go. Um, cool. So yeah, let me go ahead and share my screen. Uh, so, yeah, so this is the prototype site that Chris is, uh, again, taking the time to build and create. Uh, so there is some placeholder information still right now since it is the prototype stage, um, but we've got really nice highlight cards here. Um, Alex Earl and Alexander Brandis are two of the uh, first responses we got. So they're gonna be two of the first uh, published, uh, two of the first published. So we've got a really nice page. We've got screenshots or um, headshots from folks. If not, we're gonna be working with them to do that. We've got really nice layout here. Uh, again, I, I can't say enough thanks and appreciation for Chris for all work. Um, like this is just fantastic and looks lovely and uh, it just is gonna be a great representation of what we're looking for. So yeah, um, we're putting together pull requests and working with the contributors to make sure that everything's correct there. Um, we're, we're working with the uh, my fellow writers to help with any docs reviews. So um, we're getting a lot of eyes on this and a lot of review and a lot of, uh, a lot of excitement and a lot of great uh, positive things are being said so far. So, yeah. Excellent. That looks great. Thank you, Chris. Thanks. Thanks to, I think it was Christina Pizzagalli who did an initial design for us, right? So thanks to Christina, yeah. Kevin, thank you. This looks wonderful. Chris, any comments you want to make? Um, oh yeah. Do you guys want me to uh, follow the temp that the design hundred percent and add to it? Uh, for, say for example, uh, on the contributors page. So I uh, add to it like a link to like, we, uh, like something like uh, it was there before, but I didn't implement it because I wasn't sure if I put, should put it in. But uh, there was something like, uh, well, are you interested in contributing? If you do, like here's the information you can follow. So I can put that card. Oh, too. okay. So, so what you're asking is, should we have 
do you want to help? Do you want to help out somewhere on the page? Is that what you're thinking? Yep. Like linking to the participate and contribute stuff saying, Hey, if you want to be a contributor as well, here's how you can kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. I think that'd be, I think that would be nice, but I th don't think it's mandatory. I mean, it's, that is already accessible from, because you've already integrated the top bar, right? Yeah. Kevin, I see the top bar already there and the top bar on its community overview has exactly that page already there. But no harm in adding an additional link. Hey, do you want to be a contributor like this? Click here. So I, I think that sounds like a good idea as a sort of a closing closing item. Oh, yeah. yeah. I can go back for, to the first page. Yeah, of course. I think, I think it's like, oh, so I, should, I have to fix it then. Because uh, Alex's image is not here. Right, nor is um, Alex's Alex Earls, nor is Alexander Brandis. So this page needs needs image correction somehow, right? And that might be something that I missed, Chris, because uh, I put I had put Alex's avatar image in, I think two out of the three places. I might have missed that third spot because um, I hadn't realized that there was the SRC, the static, and the, and the, and then there was like a third place for that all to go. So um, let me make sure that. I've uploaded everything correctly and put everything where it needs to be and and check again. Okay. Because I think it's me probably because like it's supposed to be just one image. You put the link there and they should work like out of the box. But uh, I think I hard coded the image in, so got a spotlight card. So that's why. Let me check. Okay. It. Yeah. No worries. Yeah. And so Kevin, could you go back to that page? Back to the uh, the per per contributor page. So there's a Twitter link and a GitHub link. So that's because they provided social social contact information for those. And that takes us right to Alexander's page. Uh, yeah, it, it is act actually it does. should, yeah. So, okay, very good, perfect. Yeah, and uh, and then um, Chris was uh, really, really helpful in the last day because uh, this is one of the, the things that I just noticed was, well, uh, if the contributor doesn't want to provide their LinkedIn or doesn't want their email connected directly to this, we need to be mindful of that and consider that. So uh, Chris has helped with uh, making sure that if that information's not there, the icon's not showing up. So uh, for instance, if we go to Alex or else, his is going to be different because he only provided his uh, LinkedIn or his GitHub rather. Um, mm -hmm. And then I think someone else had uh, brought their threads uh, handle. So mm. That's a totally separate one that we haven't accounted for. We might need to add that, but um, yeah, outside of that, everything is, yeah, really fantastic and presented and linking up and connecting everywhere that we wanted it to. Great, thank you. Excellent show, thanks very much. Mm -hmm. Any, let's see, so back to sharing my screen, let's take a look at the next topic on the agenda, unless there's something more on Contributor Spotlight. I think we covered everything that uh, that I had on my, on um, what we've got worked so far this, I mean, this week and everything on the last couple of weeks, just kind of syncing up, so yeah. Great, excellent. All right, next topic was Google Summer of Code. And here, Chris, I think you're the you're a strong voice there. We had a note that CDF is writing a blog post and that they want our review. Is there more that's happening there on Google Summer of Code at this point? I am like I'm preparing to um to submit a PR to add all the ideas over the next few days, but it takes time. Oh good, okay. And those ideas to Jenkins.io, right? So to the to the top level website. Now, Chris, I had offered some ideas. Do you want me to put mine in there? Or are you going to put them in there for me? Yeah, we did it for you already. Oh, oh, very good. Thank you. Okay. All right. So already did the work for Mark. Thank you very much. Anything else that you want to highlight there on Google Summer of Code, Chris? Uh, for Google Summer of Code, like I think we have to make an effort to attract mentors because I we didn't see any traffic at all from the posts we made on those scores. So it's kind of like um, not ideal. 
Because I normally that there should be at least one or two inquiries, but I don't see any. Yeah, so it makes no sense to have projects without mentors assigned, right? Really, it doesn't. So, yeah, maybe we should hurry up and like put up the idea so like people can tell like what kind of projects we have. Right. Post post the ideas quickly, and then start recruiting mentors. Recruit mentors just as quickly, immediately thereafter. Yeah. Good. Any anything else on Google Summer of Code? Mm, I think for now it's just ideas. We're collecting the ideas. That's the the, the most important thing we work on now. So Kevin, I guess one thing to to warn you about is Chris asked me, hey, should we continue the Jenkins documentation screenshot project? And my suggestion was no, because I'm just not passionate enough about it personally to do the effort for it. And and I didn't detect that others who were willing to be mentors were were somehow passionate in ways I was not. So that was one that it was a, an idea last year. And it's not not on the list for this year. All right, great. Next topic then was the tweets and LinkedIn guidance. So we had a we had an ongoing discussion in the Jenkins Governance Board. Jenkins Governance Board discussed the uh, if we need a, if we would be helped by. with some sort of a policy and didn't come to a final policy, but guidance from the board suggested that developers are more interested in developer topics than they are in social topics. Therefore, how to write tests is more interesting than happy new year or happy whatever, right? So the idea was, as Alyssa noted here, focus more on developer technical tweets. We've just, just started a little bit of an extra work on that, two tweets in the last two days with technical topics, right? And then tweet every blog post is a is a good thing and linkedin and and this is one i think we all ought to remind ourselves linkedin has a far higher impact for us than twitter does and and it's a little bit surprising i'm used to thinking of twitter as the way to do social but as it turns out linkedin has has more subscribers to the jenkins project it gets more responses to any posting we do so so linkedin is and it's also a actually a, a better place for the kinds of things we want to describe because it doesn't have arbitrary limits on the length of the content that we post. So it's actually the better place for social posting on technical topics, oddly enough. Now, Alyssa noted we'll probably steer away from US only holiday, US only social posts. So we did one on Veterans Day and that was what sort of the catalyst for the whole discussion. And the discussion was, hey, not that's not a common holiday outside the US, US. and in fact, in some countries in Europe, it's almost a day of mourning uh, because of the terrible impact of World War I on, that, on those, those environments. But then the question from Alyssa was, do we want to do some holiday posts intermixed in? And should we consider, for instance, uh, happy holidays on the 25th of January, a happy new year, Chinese new year. Chris, I think that's February of 2024. Is that right? Um, let me check because like, I'm not sure. I thought it was February 10 of 2024, but... 
let's see. So it's like it's fiber tungstens. Okay. And and then one of the ideas that Alyssa suggested to me in a conversation was focus all posts on Jenkins related things related to the 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 topic of the post. For instance, if we did one on happy holidays, it's hey, it's the end of year for Jenkins. Jenkins end of year. We're skipping two weeks without a release. All right. Now they got something useful in it, not just happy holidays. Yeah. Because I thought you would uh, say something like, uh, oh, it's almost uh, Christmas season. What will you get under the tree? Maybe a new Jenkins instance or whatever. But no, <laughs> yours is much better. Well, but but that's that's it's an excuse there. Now for Chinese New Year, I'm not sure what event we've got in that period. So we'd need to think more about it. What thing could we attach? But that was sort of the idea. Any comments uh, or concerns? Bruno? No. Uh, maybe. Yeah, maybe just a comment about the Chinese New Year. It will be after the Contributor Summit in Brussels. So maybe we could send a blog post, if we do it quickly, uh, with a summary of <clears throat> what happened in Brussels. So what happens in Brussels doesn't stay in Brussels, but go to China. China. Right. Yeah. Okay. I like that. That's very Agreed. good. Good, very good. Anything else on tweets and LinkedIn? So one of the one of the points, I guess I have one more, which is we need help from others to flag relevant articles into the advocacy and outreach getter channel. This is not something that is well suited to one person being the sole individual who proposes them. So keep your eyes on social, keep your eyes on places and be ready to propose tweets into that group so that we get get more and LinkedIn posts so that we get more traffic. Okay. Um, what about uh, retreating or reposting on LinkedIn things that we find interesting, but are not written directly by the community members? Um, because for example, on LinkedIn, I have subscribed to a virtual channel called Jenkins, hash Jenkins. And I have quite a few articles popping up from time to time. So some of them look interesting to me. So is there a way to report that or should we put it in a, um, sorry, in the guitar channel or enter it into a Google Sheets so that other can vote? Yeah. So I'd say propose it in the Gitter channel. Okay. And, and particularly if you found something interest, interesting, we want to share it. It's a way to increase people's awareness of Jenkins. Mm -hmm. And so why not? Yes, propose it in the Gitter channel to share. And then, then we repost, you know, repost more widely. Just a minute. Okay. It's, I have no idea what Gaurav's T's note taker is, so I'm removing. Interesting, not removing when I say to remove. Oh, I guess it's an AI client. Okay, uh, put it, right, put it into the waiting room. I don't care where. I just don't want, <laughs> we don't need it here. They're not part of the meeting. Great, all right. Anything else on the social media topic? Okay, next topic then, DevOps Dozen Award nominations. So Jenkins is a finalist in the topic, in the category for most innovative DevOps open source project. Please encourage your friends and colleagues to register and vote. It's a long list. Go find Jenkins, vote for it. Any questions there? Um, I've tried to, but there were so many options. So can I just go to Jenkins and just submit for Jenkins and forget the rest? 
Yes. Oh, great. <laughs> Thank you. I do it. Now, I, I admit there were some others there that I actually wanted to vote for because I, I recognize some names. Victor Farsich, for instance, is there in the list. I think Darren Pope may be in the list as well. And I, I think those I wanted to. But it, I, I felt I did not feel duty bound to vote for every item in their list. Okay, I thought I had to, and I was very uh, yeah. embarrassed because I didn't know, you know, the four choices. Who should I vote to, uh, for? I don't know them. So, exactly. Okay. Yep. So the answer, my answer on that, so many options. Mark voted only for the ones that he knew. Good. Anything else before we close for today? Okay. Let's end the recording. Thanks very much.